Hi, in this tutorial I will introduce cloth and fabric simulation in Blender. Stick around until the end. I have a box in the scene that I want to use as a collider, though you can use a simple cube as well. Press Shift A to add a cube. First I need a plane object. Press Shift A, go to Mesh and select Plane. You can scale it up using the S key and move it with shift space, then select the move tool. Next go to the physics section and add cloth physics from the list. Now I can start the simulation by pressing the space key which triggers the animation. The fabric passes through the box, so I need to add a collision to the box. Go to the physics tab, add collision. There are many properties you can experiment with. If you simulate now, you'll see that fabric freezes. I need to add subdivisions. Press tab. Currently, I only have one face. Right click and then choose subdivide to add subdivisions. You can increase the number of cuts, but I prefer a different method. Go to the Modifier tab and search for Subdivision Surface. Set it to Simple and increase the levels. This will add subdivisions to your object. You can also adjust it dynamically. Press Space again. Now the simulation looks good, but some parts of the fabric intersect without proper collision. To fix this, go to the collision section at the bottom and enable self-collision. The issue is now resolved. But this reduces the speed slightly. You can improve the simulation quality using the quality setting. This enhances the collision quality but decreases speed. The speed is a multiplier applied to the current speed. The vertex mass is set to 0.3 kg. Let's change it to 1 kg. Now it feels too heavy. Let's set it to 0.1 kg. You can easily tell it's lightweight. Let's rid it back. You can also increase the air intensity to have a stronger effect on the physics simulation. It looks relaxed now. There are many properties, but I will ignore some as they are not necessary. The stiffness section determines how the material reacts to the physics simulation. We don't need to delve into this part for this video. The damping section modifies the physics behavior slightly, and each field has a clear description. Let's increase the speed and mass and test damping. Press space. This is the default behavior of the cloth. Let's increase damping values and try again. There are some slight changes, but the most important setting is blending. This option will add noise to the cloth. Let's try higher values. There's a lot of noise. Let's revert the values back. We can ignore the internal springs for now, since this section is less important than 
others. Activate the pressure. When I simulate, you can see air pressure being applied. Air comes from the bottom, just like in a balloon. Let's pick a value for pressure. Now it looks more like balloon. Using the custom volume option, you can add effects to pressure. For example, you can add force fields and wind effects. Fluid density will increase the density of fluid inside the object and simulate this effect. As you can see, an effect resembling a ball has been added. In the vertex group, you can specify an edge or vertex to apply or prevent the effect. Navigate to the vertex group section. Let's switch to edit mode with the tab key. Here I need to assign this edge to a group. Click the plus button to add a layer and press assign for the selected edge. Then return to the physics section. Here, select the vertex group. As you can see, only the selected edge has air pressure applied. The result isn't great. I guess we need to add real subdivisions in edit mode. Okay, revert everything back and disable the pressure. I don't need it now. In the cache section, I can bake the simulation to the plane. If I do this, I can delete the cube and still keep the collision effect. Moving on to shape. During the simulation, I can add pinpoints to the cloth. I've created a vertex group for this edge. Let's assign it to the pin group. Now press space. As you can see, the pinned area doesn't move. I can reduce the pin's range. But first, let's select another vertex. Go to edit mode and select the edge. Press remove to take the edge out of the vertex group. Then select the corner vertex and then hit assign. Alright, let's simulate again. This is good. In the shape section, reduce the stiffness. The range of the pinpoints has decreased. Good. Now move up a bit. Here I can raise collision quality, though it is slowed down the press slightly. You can change the collision distance between the plane and the object. Let's choose a number and try again. Now the plane visibly collides with the cube in a specific distance. Let's revert it to the original value. You can apply this distance to a vertex group only or a collection. In self-collision, distance also applies. This value works for me. I'll leave it as is. Let's run another simulation. First assign the edge to the group. Now move the cube slightly. Hit space. This is very good. Now press Z and enable render mode. I want to see the simulation with lights and shadows. I'll use EV next. You can watch the full tutorial on EVNX here. You can also add thickness to the plane if it's too thin. Head to the modifiers and search for solidify. 
increase thickness via this field. Press Z and enter solid mode. I can see it better now. Run the simulation again. Parts intersecting. I'll reduce thickness slightly. In the final step, head back to the cache section to bake the simulation. Ensure the frame rate in the cache matches the timeline. Press bake. It might take some time based on your system. When baking is complete, you can delete it using delete bake. Hit a space. The speed is good since it's baked, not real time anymore. Move the cube and the plane collide just like before. Now you can easily export the model as FBX or other formats. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And feel free to ask any questions or share your ideas in the comments.